Hello VAM community, this is Cyrinxo. I'm here to do a quick tutorial on how to use VAM Timeline, an awesome keyframe animation plugin made by Acid Bubbles. Uh, the version I'm using right now I believe is 1.10.2. I hope I remember that correctly. Let's dive right in. Um, start with Abigail and I'm going to add the plugin. If you've installed it properly it should be in your scripts folder. I've got my VAM Timeline right here. Um, use the atom animation to add animation to an atom. Controller is if you have multiple atoms with animations and you want them to be synchronized. Um, there's instructions for that in Acid Bubbles. Uh, uh, read me where you downloaded this file. So we'll add this, open the UI. Here, let's start off the first tab, animation settings. Notice that each different tab has uh, different controls. We'll start at the first one. Um, this is where you can add animations. Here's a list right now. We just have one animation called Anim1. You can create a new one if you wanted to. We can rename it. We'll call this first. Oops, caps lock on. You can change the length of animation. Let's uh, add time to the end of this animation and make it four seconds. You can decide if you have more than one animation. You can decide which one comes next, or you can tell it to random it. Uh, randomized to the next animation. Otherwise it will simply either loop that single animation or it will uh, play it once and stop. Uh, blending tells you how much the animation sub should blend when they transition from one animation to the next one. Um, always keep this checked. You can auto play on load and linked animation pattern is pretty cool. That's how you trigger things uh, with this plugin indirectly and we'll get to that later. All right. So we have one animation that's four seconds long. Next, let's add some targets. By targets, I mean nodes. Right? You've got to be able to control the nodes with this plugin, and you have to designate which nodes to control. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some. You click Add Controller once you've selected which ones you want. Add params, uh, parameters. This is what we will use later to uh, make an expression change. And once again, you can designate different controllers for each animation. Right now we have a new controllers tab. We couldn't see that before but it's there now because we have controllers uh, designated. So let's go there. This is where you will do most of your work in timeline. Uh, up at the top this is a list. Right now it's a list of keyframes that only includes the beginning and the end. Let's add another one. The way you do that is you decide where you want it to be and then you just change the pose. So let's say at one second in and notice how at one second in nothing is being controlled. Let's say at one second in we want her to raise her hand and give us a little wave. Let go. Hey, what's up? Ah, let's, let's change her head too. So right, it'll take her one second to go from the starting pose to this pose. Uh, if you click select root up at the top left right here this will take you boom right back to the right back to the plugins page uh, of your person atom and you'll see now that the head and the right hand are animated they are controlled so if we hit previous frame go back to the beginning next frame you'll see this is what we'll end up at let's just play that and you'll see that over one second and of course this one second keyframe now exists in the list uh, over one second She'll raise her hand and her head, and then over three seconds, she'll put it back down again. So I hit stop to bounce back to the beginning and play. One second up, four, uh, three seconds down. One second up, okay, you can pause with the stop button, hit it again to bounce back to the beginning. Um, let's add another keyframe. So let's go to the next frame. Say copy frame because we want to start where we ended last time. And let's make her wave. Now a waving motion is quicker than one second, so let's say uh, 0.3 seconds for each little waving motion. Right, so now we paste frame. You notice how her hand drifted up? That's because it was starting to follow the curve. Right? The curve, the smoothing, that's what keeps the, these motions from being robotic. And you can actually change the kind of curve you want. I generally don't. I usually leave it as smooth, but sometimes it might be appropriate to change what kind of curve the movement the movement uh, uh, happens at. 
right? but we are at 1.3 right now and we want to change her hand just a little Select root. Yeah, anything else we need to change? Sure. Let's have her head come back down a little bit. All right. Now let's um, add another 0.3 seconds. Notice how her hand is continuing along the same curve that it was before. Now we want her hand actually to stop and go back because she's waving not continuing on that same curve. Same for her head. This is why you need to paste the frame again. You need to control these. Um, if you don't, if you just played, if you had a 30 second animation, you started it off um, making her move, then she'll be off the screen by the end of 30 seconds. She'll be um, continuing that curve and then swooping back in again towards the end, um, which you don't want. So I definitely recommend uh, adding a keyframe at least every second to make sure that you don't have whatever random node following its curve off where you don't want it to be. Okay, where are we at? You can always find out by flipping back through your keyframes. So we start off with raising your hand. Whoop. We wave once. We wave twice. And what I did was I pasted the one second pose back here again. Now her head is back up, so she's going to be nodding her head down and up again over the course of 0.3 seconds. Maybe we don't want her to do that. So let's say, let's take away the head control for 1.6, right? No longer controlled. Now you'll see what happens is her head goes down a little bit and then her head goes down a little bit more because it's following the curve. Well, that's fine. We'll leave that for now. Let's just focus on the hand. So I'm going to go to the previous frame. I'm going to copy it. Do the same thing again, add 0.3 seconds. I'm going to paste. So I just basically used uh, two poses and I pasted them in twice. And once again, here I'll take away her head control and she should wave twice. So let's say stop and play. Quick couple of waves, come back down again. Quick couple of waves, come back down again. Right, I like that animation. The only problem is her hand goes down really slowly. So let's take this time between 1.9 and 4 and shorten it. Let's see, that's 2.1 seconds. So let's take off one second. Let's just remove one second. So let's go to the frame that we want to remove the time from. And now we go back to the animation settings. And I showed you anim animation length here. This is where you pick crop extend at time. This is the important one for taking time out of the middle of an animation. So we reduce the animation length by one second. That's what we said we wanted to do. And now when we go back to our controllers tab, you'll see that it goes from 1.9 to 3 instead of 1.9 to 4. Right? Now this was at the end, but you could also change this from 1 to 1.3 to 1 to 1.4. You could add 0.1 seconds. You can do whatever you want to extend or contract the timing anywhere. With that, um, with that feature. So if you don't like the flow, you can just dive in there at the appropriate keyframe, keyframe and edit. All right, and she puts her hand down twice as fast, not so slow. Great, so that is keyframe animation in a nutshell. And I think I might have done that in less than five minutes. No, probably not. But there is more, so if you want to keep watching, let's learn how to do expressions. All right, let's add remove targets. We already have these three nodes for control, but how do you add control for her face? Well, geometry, my dear. And in fact, geometry doesn't appear to be in the list. Let's open the UI again. Let's reload it. Oh, and just got rid of all of my controllers. All right, well, let me redo this and I'll be back with you in just one second. All right, I'm back. I realized that the reason that there was no geometry is because I don't have any geometry animatable. And right, I redid this little hand animation. It's a bit jankier this time. We'll go ahead 
um, to female morphs and let's go ahead and check the morph we want the pose morph as animatable so if now that we have an, anima an animatable morph we should be able to go to plugins and look there's geometry all right and there's only one morph that we checked as animatable which is abigail smile so let's go ahead we select that and say add param and now we have geometry abigail smile and low under tab we have params so let's go to the params tab um let's see where do we want her smile to start let's start her smile from the very beginning right so it starts at zero and then over the course of one second let's go to the next frame at one second um we want it to go up to let's say 80. Right? now if we just left it like this you look at all the next frames see how it's taking itself it's curving itself back down towards zero so if we want her to keep her smile let's keep this up at 80 for as long as we want it to go all right 1.9 and that'll leave one second for her smile to fade back out all right now let's stop and show you what that looks like you can see her smile open stay and then close again sorry that animation really is much jankier than the last time i did it anyway so that is using parameters with keyframes the last thing i want to show you guys if you're still with me is linked animation patterns this is how you trigger things um, this is a very important feature it's pretty simple let's add an animation pattern move it down to where we can see it it's above her head sure and let's create let's say three animation steps and move them in a row so that we can see them moving now they're not going to be tied to anything in particular we're not going to actually be uh, uh, selecting a receiver what we will do though is we will cause them to um, trigger something an event as time passes and we will try to time them to the uh, keyframe animations so let's look at our keyframe animations where are our keyframes let's see how about if when she first raises her hand and starts waving the light starts turning on and off all right so let's just turn it on and off once um, on at one second and off at 1.9 seconds just to keep it simple so start on at one transition time is one already off at 1.9 now this should be 0.9 and let's add the animation steps and discrete action Portland outdoor light light source on checked test all right okay now let's um have this auto play well, we are about to add an animation to this one that does the same thing but turns it off okay now we have one second to here and nine tenths of a second to here and how much do we need to fill in the remaining time we have three seconds total so that would be another 1.1 seconds so we'll add 1.1 seconds for looping from the end back to the beginning again. I hope that makes sense. Point is, this entire animation should be the same length, three seconds, as your keyframe animation, three seconds. And while we're here under animation settings, you can link to that animation pattern that we just had the triggers at. So now, when I hit play, it will start the animation pattern running which will then hit the various triggers 
in the same time frame that um, I just designated as the keyframes. Okay. And then when I hit stop, this will stop running as well. And it will reset when I hit stop the second time. So let's try it. Oh, I didn't keep going. Why is this? For some reason I have loop turned off. I didn't realize I had loop turned off. Okay, well, that's fine. Not a big deal. Well, now the on and off are switched because for some reason it toggles instead of simply paying attention to the checkboxes. But you get the idea. This is how you use linked animation patterns to trigger things that are outside the scope of the plugin. You could use it, for example, to activate um, a cloth grab sphere and to turn off a clothing attachment at the same time. Just uh, throwing that idea out there. Pretty cool stuff. So those are the main features of VAM Timeline. If you're still with me so far, at least if you were with me for the first five minutes, you would know the basics of creating keyframes. I hope this helps anybody who wants to try to use this awesome plugin to create more um, complicated animations and even uh, uh, complicated scenes without using motion capture, which is kind of difficult to work with. Um, hope it helped and enjoy.